guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Honda Civic Si. And a big thanks to Sam and Joe at Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV or truck in the Port Ritchie, Tampa, Clearwater area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And as for Sam or Joe. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Si has been a sporty version of Honda's compact Civic since 1984 part of the third generation Civic. The 11th generation Civic Si that you see here has been with us since 2022, featuring Honda's 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder, and this application cranking out 200 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. Made it exclusively to a crisp shifting six-speed manual transmission, and for 2024, not much changes since its release, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. With a $29,100 base price, what else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, Typical Honda Civic design, the only real difference is the red SI badge to the right of the Honda badge. We have full LED headlamps with a high and low beam and an LED daytime running strip right up top. We don't get functional fog lights in the corners, but that can be added in in the aftermarket. Hopefully you can pick up the radiator up top and the intercooler down below for this one and a half liter turbo four cylinder. We get the Sonic Gray Pearl paint too, and it is a beautiful paint color really shines in this Florida sun. The wheel and tire setup is also aggressive for the SI. Similar wheels that we get from the Sport, but here with the SI, they actually match this aggressive sedan a little bit better, especially with the spoiler out back, which we'll check out in one second. But these are 18 inch black Y-spoke wheels wrapped in Goodyear Eagle Sport all season tires. Dimensions being 235-40R18. So the 40 series sidewall, although it's low profile, it should still be thick enough to keep the ride quality nice and comfortable. We get smart access for the driver and a front passenger, all black trim for the window trim, blacked out B and C pillar, and blacked out mirrors too. We get blind spot monitoring on the glass. The glass fills up just about the entire frame. We get a sunroof up top too, and a shark fin style antenna. The gas cap is pushed to open with easy fill, 91 octane fuels recommended, but you can still throw in 87 if you're in a pinch. Same rear wheel and tire setup, the only difference is a smaller brake caliper. The taillights don't appear to be LED for the outside, or the turn signal, but the reverse light does appear to be LED. We get chrome aluminum looking Civic badge and Honda badge. The SI is red in the right corner and a black deck lit spoiler. These tints also match the Sonic Gray Pearl paint beautifully. Shout out Ocean Honda of Port Ritchie for helping make this review possible. We get dual exhaust tips down below. And speaking of the dual exhaust tips, let's fire up this 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder and hear how she sounds. All right guys, that was the sound of the one and a half liter turbo four cylinder sold by Honda for the 2024 Civic Si. And it sounds pretty good, cranking out a decent amount of power at 200 horsepower, 192 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this 2024 Civic Si to 60 in about six and a half seconds, making it a very acceptable performer. Not quite as quick as the previous two generations, but still more than quick enough, about seven tenths of a second quicker compared to the regular Civic with a one and a half liter turbo. But what you see is basically what we get. We can shut this hood right down. It is burning my hand because we don't get hydraulic struts, but not a big deal for a $29,000 base price. And speaking of $29,000 base price, let's take a step inside and see what we get. Again, we get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. We'll turn these headlights back to auto so the car's not yelling at me. Up top, we get hard plastic, some gloss black underneath, hard plastic separating this panel from the soft panel, which is cloth trim, gushy soft cloth armrest. We get auto one touch up front, power windows out back. These are fresh tints, so we can't open them up, but we don't get dual panes anyway, you can take my word for it. We get four-way adjustable mirrors, two solid storage compartment. You'll fit a foot long and a 30 ounce bottle right next to it. Trunk release, no nameplate stepping inside, but really not a big deal. The seats, they look a little bit basic, but they're very comfortable and supportive. Perfect for a vehicle in the segment. They're not power adjustable, but you can still recline, drop, lift, and slide the front seat. Taking a step inside, we can really check out. So foot on the brake, foot on the clutch, engine start, stop and everything fires right to life. But first thing we notice is the steering wheel. Honda's been really knocking it out of the park with their new vehicle. Steering wheels, very thick, red contrast stitching, solid 10 and two bolstering notch, and the nine and three feels perfect in my hands. The horn area is rubberized with good graining to it. The horn itself, 
Not very loud and aggressive, but hopefully people still get out of your way. We have our volume and skip controls on the left side, home and voice commands. These are the adjustments for the infotainment setup. You can press this home button to adjust between range and average fuel economy. You can go up and down between A or B. Also see the speed and time, audio, phone, turbo gauge, navigation, driver attention, throttle and brake distribution, G meter, stopwatch, seat belts, maintenance, safety support, and a blank screen. You can also customize the display. My personal favorite to look at at all times would probably be the turbo gauge, so we'll leave it there. We also get about a 6,500 RPM tack, digital speedo in the center, and a 160 mile an hour digitally illuminated analog speedometer on the right side. Total mileage of the vehicle in the center, the drive modes right above it, temperature outside, 360 cents, and the fuel gauge all the way underneath. This is a beautiful gauge display. I believe it's 12.3 inches. The stocks have a really satisfying click. Auto headlamps, auto high beams, no auto rain sensing wipers, but wouldn't be expected. The intermittent stock right there in the center. To the left of the steering wheel, we have a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Interior brightness, 360 cents you can disable. Traction control you can also disable. Hood latch release and hopefully you get a good look at your pedals. We get some red trim outside of the air vent controls and I'm really liking these new Civic controls. They got similar designs in the new HRV and the new CRV. The dashboard is soft touch. I kind of wish they put this material up for the top part of the door panel. We get a nine inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see all apps, phone, FM, Bluetooth, audio, smartphone, trip computer, Sirius, USB, all the settings. We don't have actual GPS, so although it said navigation in the digital gauge display, it's only gonna show you the navigation if you have the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connected. Anyway though, my personal favorite to look at at all times would probably be the trip computer, so we'll leave it there. Here you can see the range and average fuel economy both for trip A and trip B. Volume dial is a very high quality resistance to it. I like that we get hard buttons outside of the touchscreen too. Down below, a more Civic style air vents to be expected with a Civic SI. Single zone automatic climate control, two USB A ports, no USB C ports. That'd be expected in 2024. We have 12 volt perfect for a radar detector, solid storage, no wireless charging pad, but not a big deal. Those things take forever to charge anyway. We get our drive mode selector. We have normal, sport, and individual mode. We'll start the review off in sport, transition to normal, and just see what the differences are. You can turn off the auto start stop behind it. That's actually interesting. I haven't seen a lot of manuals outside of the Civic SI feature the auto start stop. I believe the Bronco does it too, but really that's about it. We have an electronic parking brake with brake hold, six speed manual transmission, throw it into the reverse, foot in the clutch, all the way to the right, pulled back, and now we can check out our backup camera. It has pretty solid resolution, guidance lines and trajectory. The steering has a really tight feel too. The camera gets three different views. Here we have a more narrow view and an over the top view. That's nice for the city if you're trying to maximize the space in front of the car behind you. Throwing right back into neutral, we can leave the parking brake engaged, let go of the clutch. Behind that, we have two cup holders and they're pretty large. They're not big enough to fit my giant bottle, but if it was anything smaller, it would fit with no problem. There's no lid to cover it up. We get some faux carbon plastic trim surrounding it. The armrest is cloth, but it's pretty nice and soft. Decent amount of space too. You'll fit a one liter bottle of soda, maybe a two liter bottle of soda in there, but that's about it. The glove box, if I call that a glove box, I apologize, center console, but the actual glove box, it's okay. It's decently sized. You'll fit between 15 and 20 license plates. You'll fit a pair of shoes in there with no problem probably nothing else. We don't get an auto dimming rear view mirror. Here's the flappy thing to dim it, but the frame is skinny. The interior lights are LED. And as we mentioned before, we do get sunroof. It opens up really quickly. We'll see if it opens up any further. It does not. We can poke our way out of here. Beautiful day in Port Ritchie, Florida, sunny and 84 degrees. We can shut this sunroof right up, leave the shade open. So when we hop out back and you see how much light is brought into the cabin. And that's about it. If I didn't mention the sound system in this interior is Bose and it sounds really good for a vehicle with a $30,000 base price. Speaking of $30,000 base price, here we have the sticker for the 2024 Civic Si four-door, the sonic gray pearl metallic, black and red interior, standard features. You guys can pause, take a look. The only option we have here is a sonic gray pearl for 45 bucks. We mentioned 29.1 for the base price, about 1100 bucks for the destination charge, totaling us out at 30,650 bucks. Really good value for what we get. 31 combined MPGs, 27 in the city, 37 on the highway. You can see everything else available on this sticker. Cool, putting it right away. That's about it for the front seat, guys. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there. As well as the overall quality of the material. So out back, up top, just like up front, 
you would expect hard plastic materials. The door handle though is nice and aluminum, really reminds me of something you get from the Camaro. We get a gushy soft cloth armrest, no auto on touch out rear, but not a big deal. Decent amount of storage. You'll stack up a foot long, you'll easily lay down a six inch sub. Two Bose speakers on the door panel too, the rear seats. Similar to up front, but the padding doesn't continue out to the door frame. They're still pretty comfortable cloth seats with some red contrast stitching and what appears to be some really impressive legroom. Taking a step back here, I'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have five, six inches of knee room. My head's starting to get a little bit close, but I like how Honda cuts out an extra inch or two for the headroom. So I still have about half an inch before my head would start to touch. So if you're under six foot four, six foot five, you'll fit back here with no problem. No air vents, unfortunately, we do get something underneath the front seats nothing that blows directly into your face. We get a map pocket behind the passenger seat, nothing behind the driver, the center cubby. You gotta jab your hand into it to access it, but it's really soft cloth. You'll fit a 12 to 16 ounce bottle here and a 24 ounce bottle right next to it. The interior lights are LED. Cool, if you didn't see it, let me show it to you one more time. There we go. All right guys, that's about it for the back seat of this 2024 Honda Civic Si. Let's hop out to this cargo space real quick, see how much space is offered back here, and then take this car out for a drive. So the hatch, it's not electrically assisted, but it's a very easy process the way that it comes up. We have the two latches to fold down the rear seat, 60-40 split, and you do so, I'd expect you to fit a 50-55 inch TV back here. The opening is absolutely massive, but however, as you see, the wheel wells do protrude a little bit. Secret storage, we'll see what we got going on underneath this all-weather floor liner. We get a little bit of secret storage outside of the Fix-A-Flat kit. Underneath this foam, as you see, we don't get a spare tire, just a Fix-A-Flat kit for the Civic Si. Anyway, though, the cargo space for a compact sedan is really impressive, and as you see, you can fold the rear seats down 64 to split. Very easy to open and close the trunk, has very lightweight aluminum feel. That's about it, though, guys, for the inside and outside of this 2024 Honda Civic Si. It is a beautiful vehicle, both inside and out, with about a $30,000 base price, and as it sits here, a tick over $30,000. It is a lot of vehicle for the money. Performance-wise, let's take this 2024 Honda Civic Si out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all-new 2024 Honda Civic Si. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions, though, we're starting off in sport. And the steering here feels really good. The clutch feels pretty easy to get used to. A little chirp in the tires. A lot of power here with this turbo engine. And the Sport, we get a really nice snarl with this artificial but pretty nice sounding induction note. We can take a step out here. Open her up a little bit. Good torque. This thing picks up speed good. And we do have, oh, wow, nice. We do have automatic rev matching too. And it does so pretty, pretty well. Try out some passing power, about half throttle. Good pull. It feels really strong here, guys. <laughs> Take a step out here. Really tight turning radius. Nowhere to go, unfortunately, but slight throttle. Nice, smooth process. The brakes also feel really good. Taking a step out here. More downshifts. It sounds really good when we rev match downshift this thing. We'll take a step out into this highway. Probably try to open her up a little bit more as soon as we get the chance. All right, guys, taking a step out here. Try to open her up a little bit more. <laughs> this thing can get up and go really quickly. We catch up to traffic like it is nothing. We have a government vehicle in front of us, so we're not going to do anything too crazy. Slight acceleration. Still feels really solid. We'll try it out in sixth gear. At about 50 miles per hour, 55 miles per hour, we're still turning over 2,000 RPM. So it's a high revving four cylinder turbo. On highways, you'll probably be at about 3,000, if not higher. But it still averages 37 highway MPG, so definitely nothing to complain about. On the highway, it's nice and quiet. 
you hear a little bit of road noise but nothing unbearable the steering still feels really good when we're at highway speeds try another rev match downshift slow down a little bit <laughs> sounds really good all right guys taking a step out here we can try out a couple twisties it feels really strong the steering feels good coming out brakes feel good turn in steering feels super sharp This thing feels really sporty. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can pick it up on camera. Trying out a turning radius test right here. Should be pretty sharp and come back up. Body rolls are so limited, it feels so planted, even with these all season tires. Steering feels excellent, ton of grip. Ooh. This car is a blast. We're gonna have to beat it up a whole lot further. Hopefully, you guys can pick it up on camera. This is a ton of fun for the money. All right, guys, one more time. We can take a step out onto this multiple lane highway on the gas. Ooh. It revs really high for a turbocharged four cylinder engine. Overall, guys, if you're looking for a sporty sedan, but you're not looking to spend more than 30 ish thousand dollars, this is really one of the best ways to go. I would, I would recommend checking out the WRX too, but honestly, the WRX does not feel anywhere close to as refined as a Civic Si. Subaru has done a great job with the WRX for this generation. It definitely feels a lot better than it did in the previous generation, but this is still a way, way more refined vehicle overall. If that's what you're looking for, guys, I would definitely recommend checking out the only 2024 Honda Civic Si. And a big thanks to Samwise at Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the new Port Ritchie, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.